Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the March High School Assessment Coordinator meeting, and uh, we're going to get rolling into the slides uh, in a moment. We do uh, have several things we want to I want to cover. Um, mostly, uh, just follow up on a couple things, but then we're going to really spend time focusing on the uh, pre-ACT secure. So let's go in and take a look at this and we'll start the slideshow. So uh, what we're going to cover today, uh, at some point, we're going to just follow up with the ACT. I realize that it's actually not done yet. So we'll just, uh, there's one or two things that you need to be aware of, but also as always, we're trying to improve what happens as we um, move away from an assessment that just happened. It's like, okay, so if we had to do it all over again, what would we do differently? So we'll be looking for some of that information or just some thoughts a little bit later. Uh, same thing is true with the DCYA. We'll talk about that. Today, our focus is on pre-ACT secure, but keep in mind, we also have the dynamic learning maps and the forward assessment out there going on. And all three of those, pre-ACT secure, dynamic learning map, and the forward, all have the same assessment window in the state. So they run from the 18th of March, so this past Monday, through the 26th of April. All right. So just to, again, some things that we've been telling you every time, but I want to keep reminding you that these are the people that are working for you in central office. Um, please don't hesitate if you have questions about anything to let any one of those know, those these folks know what your questions are. And again, our resources are on the website. Um, there's also the assessment coordinator page, uh, which just contains some, uh, basically the recordings of these meetings, uh, the slide decks and and the agendas so and finally the research assessment and improvement department our department has office hours every monday from two to three if that won't meet uh, work for you then please let us know and we'll connect because it's important that you get your questions answered all right so without further ado let's dive into the pre-act secure preparation so communications has already started going out and actually you'll see it says, well, wait a minute, what about the ACT? Why is that? Because the ACT and pre-ACT secure communications went out at the same time. Um, if you need a, a letter uh, or a note to your families, let me know and I'll send you an updated one, but it's just, it's the same letter because it included both assessments on that. And remember, that the 16th of April is a grade nine and 10 day only. Um, so we wanna make sure that the families are well aware of that ahead of time. But this was in a, uh, at least a couple different uh, uh, admin bulletins over time. And again, um, there is, has been uh, efforts on the, from the communication team to, to go into why take the test, some resources, et cetera. So, just be aware that that has been going on. If you don't follow social media um, for the district, you may or may not have seen that. So, all right, um, things that have already taken place. You received a spreadsheet with uh, information about accommodations for the pre-ACT. It came at a time when you were probably thinking of other things, but again, multiple things going on at the same time. These all had to happen um, at the times when they did in order to get things ready for you. So all the accommodations are in Pearson Access Next PAN um, and it should be ready, uh, ready to roll. So um, I think Sarah said she was getting uh, those students who are new to the district updated as well as students who are no longer enrolled um, uh, removed so you won't have to worry about those students or at least not necessarily removed but we'll have a a uh, not tested reason entered for them okay uh, one of the things that i put on the agenda for today i gave you a link to this which is the assessment of the test coordinator checklist 
This is, I'm not sure if it's new um, or if it's just been updated, but this is something you may want to consider. Um, just kind of checking to see where you are, where things need to go next. So it's a two page document. And on this page, it takes you through, um, through all the setting up the accounts, et cetera. So step three takes you through the accommodations. That's all taken care of. On the second page, um, step four is where we are at right now. Things that you don't have to worry about. And Sarah, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the test materials for students with accommodations really are very limited. They are braille, large print, and a reader's script. Those materials can be ordered in Pearson Access Next. Um, and I believe that they have been ordered for the students that have, um, have actually have those needs. And it's very few. So, um, so you won't have to worry about ordering test materials. Yep, so there's, there's only one. Thank you, Sarah. It's all been ordered. There's only one this year, one student. And so that we're working with that particular school. Uh, provide examinees test prep information. We'll talk about how students can actually do a practice pre-ACT secure. And we'll take a look at that. Um, preparing your staff and test materials. We'll talk about those things. Um, setting up the sessions, et cetera, are all a part of it. And um, I think Jeff is here. Jeff, um, I may just jump to you occasionally to say, hey, this looks really familiar, doesn't it? This is just like the ACT that you did um, a, a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, because we have said that. Is that is that correct, Jeff? Yep, sounds accurate. So, so actually, I'm looking at this and saying, if the district chooses to go online for ACT next year, and the experience that we had, Shabazz, um, I think was pretty good. Uh, the the process, this process that you're going to go through is exactly the same as for the ACT. So this is kind of, uh, we get to do it ahead of time. All right, so then we're going to go through today how to set up sessions, how to invite uh, proctors or, or uh, room supervisors to, to be in the system. We'll talk about administering the test and returning materials is pretty simple. Uh, there really aren't any materials to return. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit later as well. But that this particular document might be a really good thing for you to, to have available so you can just kind of keep track in, in your head as to what is going on and what's next, et cetera. Resources, this one looks amazingly like what's in the ACT with two exceptions. Um, the uh, number three and number four this number three, I didn't change it, but it's all, it's the pre-ACT training site and the pre-ACT secure Wisconsin website. Very similar. Um, and so all of this information is here um, uh, for you it's in one, one place. But I do want to jump into um, the pre-ACT secure resources, specifically um, our friend at DPI, Nikki Brackenier, has said, you really should do a mock administration. Um, we, I worked with tech, tech services and with Jeff and uh, at, at Shabazz to do this ahead of time. And I think it's actually not a bad idea, at least on a small scale. I don't think you want to involve every single teacher in your building, but at least it gives you a sense of, of how this rolls if you don't already know that or don't remember it. So there is a training site, and we will actually log into that a little bit later. And you can see the color difference here is the only difference really, um, that and the fact that there are um, uh, fake students um, in here. So you can actually create sessions, invite users, et cetera, et cetera. And so we'll go through that, um, that process using this as a practice site. So if you are kind of hesitant about setting something up to begin with, um, 
practicing on this uh, site will help. There is a guide for the mock administration. If you do want to do something like this, uh, please, I would suggest that, that you let me know. Uh, I'll invite tech services. Um, I know uh, that, that we had several people there from tech services and they were very interested in how this works because they don't see it happen in real time or in, in a building that it led to a couple different things of uh, conversations that we continue to have um, uh, at the district office level. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Um, the pre-ACT Secure Wisconsin website is pretty well laid out and is a great resource for you as far as if you need a document, if you want to uh, see a, a, a link to a report or to a video, the pre-ACT Wisconsin Secure Wisconsin website is where you should go. It, this happens to be laid out in steps. Um, and this is step two configuring. So we, we're actually at, I believe, step four right now. Uh, but I, want, I do want to point out that the... Um, Underneath the, the ACT logo, it says Wisconsin, the ACT. Make sure you're clicking into the pre-ACT secure portion of that. That's going to be really important because it looks slightly different. And the, the procedures are slightly different than the, the regular ACT. The slide deck has the link here to the that secure website, pre-ACT secure website. Some things uh, to think about. Uh, very similar to what we had with the uh, uh, ACT. What about a late arrival room? I mean, if students are expected to be in a particular test room um, and they come in an hour late, what do you do? Um, so think about a plan where they would go. And yes, you're right. Their tickets would probably be in a different room. They're in a different session. So that would be something to work through and say, well, um, maybe they test, I, I don't know. Well, uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I think that's something to, to think about because it is a reality for us that students will arrive late. Uh, there's a break in the testing and keep in mind that, I mean, the students are there, um, I think all day we talked about ensuring that, uh, that or knowing that transportation is not going to be coming in early for them. And uh, uh, the fact that um, there are other things to happen um, in, uh, for the, especially for the 10th graders, I think uh, most schools are going to be doing, doing the, uh, the forward test in the afternoon. You may or may not want to do that, but again, that would they're there you have them and so you should uh, take advantage of that i believe that once i think we had last year we we found that most students ended the sessions all ended because they are timed uh around 12 30 or 1 again based on breaks based on on uh, when they actually started etc and also keep in mind that you will have one ticket and for each student and that will get them in, logged in but then it's the seal codes that drive what happens with every session so the test will roll from session to session but there will be a different seal code that the students will have to have in order to actually um, get going on the next section so the person who is the the proctor or the room supervisor is controls the pace at which this goes all right. So in thinking about preparing for this, um, now that the students have all their accommodations set up in um, into Pearson Access Next, um, you're OK to go in and set up sessions. And I say that because if you set up a session and the, the accommodation changes prior to actually testing, that's OK. Just let us know. It, means pulling them out, resetting it, putting them back in, 
and then you would have to reprint their tickets. So it um, it's a little bit it's it's not uh, as bad as it used to be with with pulling them out of five sessions, but now it's it's simply making sure that it gets done. So uh, thank you for getting the accommodations done ahead of time. Tim, what, can I add something to that? Yes, please. Um, so in terms of accommodations changes, uh, like Tim said, we can do that at this point. However, once the test is, um, I think it's, is it called prepared, Tim? I forget. Yes. Once the test is prepared, we can't add anything. So please make sure you're reviewing any additional needs, or if you hear of additional needs, that those are communicated before the tests are prepared, as that involves a whole process where a test needs to be invalidated, DPI needs to get involved. Um, so it's just really important. It's not as simple as, say, a forward change. So um, please be sure to communicate those as, as early as possible if you're able to. Thank you. So think about how you're going to group your students. Um, there is no, uh, there's no reason why it has to be grade nine in one room and you know separate from grade ten. It probably logistically is easier to do that. Um, so again, thinking about our friends at at IAE, at Capital, at Shabazz, small numbers of, of ninth and tenth grade students you can test them in the same room. But you might, uh, in our comprehensive high schools, think about how you want to group the students. Students who have similar accommodations should be, um, especially if we're talking time and a half, they should be put in the same room. So again, it's not disruptive to, to all, when other students would get up and not um, without that accommodation. So keep those, like similar accommodations in the same uh, in the same room, and you can see that uh, under group testing, the first bullet there. All right, so I'm going to actually just kind of go through this and, and make some key points, but then we're going to go into the practice test site and actually do this. So here is um, the creating a test session. So the process is. Uh, Students are ready. You have to create a session, then you put students into the session. When that's all done, you go back and invite users. So who are the room supervisors or the proctors? And then you can assign them, not in the computer, but you can say, okay, Tim, you're going to have this particular section, the session name. And so you would, I would go in and look and, and come up with a session name. I log into that and I would be able to uh, get things uh, like the seal codes, et cetera. So one of the important things to think about as you create sessions is the name of the session. Um, it should be something that is uh, unique. It doesn't, it's not uh, terribly important, as important as it was on the Aspire test, uh, but it should be something like, whether it's um, your school, uh, you know, like E for the East, um, or you might put EHS and then the room number. Um, you don't, you do not have to put down which content area this is because it is, um, it is set up for all of the content areas and it just rolls one into another. So you need to think about a session naming protocol so that you would have um, you could have it understandable so that your room supervisors, your proctors will say, great, I know where that is. I know what to do. The um, scheduled start date. Well, you, I would suggest that you put it um, a little bit earlier than the 16th of April, um, but it, the window is open now. So actually, if you have students who need multiple days to test, you could theoretically get them started testing right after break. Uh, you may or may not want to do that. And scheduled start time. Keep in mind that your room supervisors cannot get in if, for instance, if you say your scheduled start time is 9 a.m., 
they can't get into this to see the sessions until 9 a.m. So I always suggest that it's a 7 a.m. start. So just so that it's, it's prepared, it's ready for your staff to get going. We'll, again, we'll go, walk through this in just a moment. Once the, the um, session has been created, you need to put students into that session. So there's a session list, we'll go, we'll go through this. Um, you'll see students in sessions, you list the sample and we'll create the name. Um, again, EHS and then the classroom number. Um, and then you go to the start button and select students. And when you do that, what will happen is you will get in a list, a list of all the students who have not been placed into sessions in your school. And unfortunately, it's my understanding, and I know, Ben, that you've been talking about this, it does not separate them by grade level. Is that correct? Anybody know? That is true. There's no listing of their grade level. Uh, Sarah's first list that she sent in January had grade yeah. level. So that's kind of the nice one to be working with. Um, because, we're, I mean, if you're making groups that are mostly grade level, which we are, um, we want to have that. But making sure that we have everything right as far as the accommodations and then the grade level, it's... It can get right. Tricky. But I always build my groups for accommodations first, and then the rest of them you can load by chunks of 25 kids or whatever you're doing. Right. Because again, what happens is you as you load these students, they're removed from the list of available students. So if you start with the students in accommodations, pull those out, then you, you know that you've got them in the right place, and then you can just go um, in order. And again, thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. And Sarah, thanks for for creating that list as always. Um, and that is something that you can certainly use to kind of guide you as to the student names um, if you want to keep them in grade level uh, classrooms. So you would add the students. You'll notice in the bottom right hand, I mean, you can literally just click the buttons over on the left hand side in the bottom left side, it says add, and that will be added to that session. Then you create the next session, add the students to it and continue that until you you run out of students. Now, here's something that I want you to be aware of. This is this one, this comes, this graphic, this image is from the uh, uh, DPI and ACT's webinar. And they suggest that beginning the Friday before the test window opens to do this next step. I'm going to suggest, since we're testing on a Tuesday, if you are certain, this is the step where Sarah said, once you do this, we can't change anything without going through DPI. So if you feel comfortable that everything is all set, um, then you can go and do what is called prepare the session. So there's a button that you would, uh, first of all, you would look for all the sessions. Um, there's a list of them. And you can use a combined view, so it will show you all the sessions. You click the button in front of them, and then it says prepare sessions. What that's doing is it locks in place where the students are, what tests they are, and it begins the process of setting up those sessions with ACT. So when the students start, um, they get the right questions, the right setup immediately. This does take a little bit of time. Not that you have to do the work, but the process of getting, you know, 60 different sessions set up might take uh, a while. So when you hit uh, prepare session, it will just start going and nothing will seem to happen for a while. Um, if you refresh the screen, it might show you which sessions are prepared. But keep in mind that this could take uh, 30 minutes. So um, it's one of those pieces where you're preparing and it does ultimately get everything ready. In which case, you'll see that at the bottom, there is a list of the students and then it says ready. That is where what happens when you prepare the test. It tells, it sets it up for every single student in each, um, uh, in each session. And it says now we're ready to actually take the test. 
which isn't entirely true. There's a few other steps. Can I ask you a quick question? Just absolutely logistically doing the training. Um, it's sometimes useful for people to be able to see the screens for the session they're going to be in and they can't unless the session is prepared, but there's risk then that they're going to go in and do something that potentially. So uh, what, what's your thinking on that? Should this really happen on Monday before the test on Tuesday, or should it happen um, the Friday of the week before the week you're doing training? Um, so they, I mean, so what happens when you prepare the session is also that it will come up with um, a little lock. So you, so you can't actually, even though it says ready, it's, it's locked. You have the ability to unlock that for the session. And that's one of the things that you have to do the morning of the, the testing. So you can set this up ahead of time. Um, again, as long as you're comfortable with where the accommodations are, et cetera, um, because moving even within, without having uh, accommodations, moving a student from session A to session B is not an easy task once you've prepared it. So if you're comfortable with where things are at, you can prepare this. You can then have staff um, log in. Um, I, they suggest, you know, the Friday before the window opens, they're also suggesting a morning meeting of the day of. Um, I, I would hesitate to have the whole weekend, um, but you know, given we're testing on a Tuesday, that might be the best thing. Um, otherwise, you can unlock it on Monday morning or prepare it on Monday morning, and then um, if you're training the staff or let them know that it's available um, at that point. Uh, to go in. One of the things we discovered um, as we did the ACT at Shabazz was that not everyone appeared to have gotten the invitations, um, which we'll talk about next, to be involved in, as a proctor. And so we want to make sure that that's also something to do ahead of time. So setting up a user account so this is, again, now we're backing away from the sessions. The sessions are set. You have not prepared them because you're not ready to do that. Hit the prepare button yet. But at the same time, then you need to continue to work on setting up who is going to proctor, who has access to these sessions. To do that, again, we go back out. You'll notice that this does say pre-ACT secure in the upper right. Make sure it's your school. Um, you may or may not have any opportunity to change it. I do, so I always have to double check with that. Then you go to setup and users. This menu is slightly larger than the ACT version of Pearson Access Next. So there's a lot of things going on here, but again, to invite staff to be become room supervisors slash proctors, you go to users. And once the users are set up, or at least you, you, the next step would be to um, create or edit users. Now you may have staff members who are already there, who are already listed. Um, there, I would strongly urge you to look at, um, I know that there's a place that you can say, I'm, I want to include uh, my, my staff who may uh, have been removed for whatever reason, just uh, disabled. And so then you can enable them um, to get them back and live, so to speak, as, as proctors or users. Uh, so create the users, and that looks something like this. Uh, make sure that you put in your school as the organization and the selected roles. Selected role would be room supervisor. As long as they have a valid e uh, MMSD email, use that, and that will set up that as their username. You do not have to put any active begin date. If you choose to, make sure it's, you know, like the day that you're doing this, that date. Um, but again, make sure you have them log into Pearson Access next prior to the test day to just ensure that there are no issues with who has access and who does not, so that there's time to to respond to questions 
concerns and issues that they may have. All right, test day, morning of testing. So remember you, you have, let's just pretend uh, on the 15th, which is Monday, you first thing you do in the morning is you prepare the tests or you choose to do that on Friday or the week before. Again, nothing is happening until you actually start the test sessions you unlock it and start the test sessions. So that should happen the morning of the test. So the first thing you do that morning is, is build this out, make sure that you, you get the sessions all started and are ready to roll um, so that that staff have access and that student computers, once they log in or using their, their uh, ticket, their username and password, that they also have access to the test. And speaking about students, again, these are multiple things happening at the same time. Um, it wouldn't hurt to have students take a look at the, the practice uh, tests that are available. Um, you don't have to do this. Uh, it is not a requirement. But again, keep in mind that the ninth graders are, uh, this is the first time that they're seeing a test like this. In general, I don't think any of them have seen um, a pre-ACT, maybe a few students who are AVID students, but they haven't seen it online like this. So I know because I checked this out, if you look at a student Chromebook, you go into the, you have to log out so that you're at the guest, the sign-in page. And in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a app menu. Test Nav is one of those apps. When you click on it, it shows up with a username and password. They don't have that at this point. They don't need it. Um, they are able to click on the bottom button, which says practice tests. So it will take them to a practice test site and they will actually do questions or have questions available. They can look at the different online tools. Um, they will be able to see what the questions look like and practice. These practice exams are not scored um, and they are not complete, but it gives them a sense of what kinds of, of questions there would be available or what, are, what they're going to be asked. So that's something that um, actually I think, um, of course, this is Tim who lives in the world of tests, but at least having some sense of what this looks like may decrease some anxiety on, uh, for some students, rather than just an unknown, we're gonna take a test and it's online and it's different than forward and it's different than other tests you've taken. So um, I'm not saying it's required, but it probably is a good idea to have at least ninth graders log in and take a look at the practice tests. And again, all of this is going on, same time frame. Um, Prior to the day of the test, you do need to have a meeting with your, uh, your team, your staff, uh, about how to do the sessions. Uh, but the morning of the um, uh, test day, the, so the 16th of April, a couple things um, need to happen. I would gather my uh, proctors. Again, it's very similar to the ACT process. Just double check to make sure that they know that this is what they're doing. If there are any last minute questions, they have their student tickets for the, the location that they're in and they know what the session name is. Uh, they know how to retrieve seal codes. We'll just briefly touch on that as well. And that they are encouraged to walk around the room and to support students, um, making sure that again, we're, we're uh, keeping cell phones and uh, all, you know, all kinds of things um, set and out of the way. And that if a student is just going through this really quickly, uh, they can certainly encourage a student to slow down. Keep in mind that also the Pearson Access Next allows them as the room supervisor to see student progress. So you'll be able to look and see 
what question, approximately what questions are on. The, if they go really fast, you, it won't keep up. But it probably refreshes every 30 seconds to a minute. And so it'll keep track of, you can see the pace that students are actually engaging with the test. I want you to remember that there is room level documentation. So they will have a uh, the tickets, the student authorization tickets. These are the things that, that are, are on the image here. There should be a roster so that they should have that. There should be a seating diagram. They do want to have something like that taken care of, a test room report. Um, if there are irregularities, uh, that is a report that is done online. You may choose to do that rather than have your staff do it. But again, if they're in the, in the session, it does kind of guide them through the irregularity date and time, what type it is, and any comments. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention is in the upper left-hand corner of all these, these documents is a, a pre-ACT Secure Online Administration Manual. This is the manual that has, it's the how to do be a room supervisor. It includes things like um, the scripts, basic troubleshooting, and these actual, the roster, the seating diagram, and the test room report are included in this paper document. Um, in the past, we have worked with printing services to get them printed. Uh, we're set to do that again for you. Um, and it would be essentially one copy per person who is, is proctoring for you. So if you have 75 people involved in, in proctoring, you would need 75 copies of this. Here's my ask. If you can um, determine how many copies you need, today is Wednesday, by Friday morning at the latest, uh, We'll send that off to printing services and it should be back in your hands um, that first week that we return. So in plenty of time for the actual test. I would like it to be there sooner. I don't know how quickly and uh, how busy printing services is, but they've usually been pretty good. So they will ship it directly to you. So that online administration manual is a critical and important piece for you and your team, your staff. Is it the same manual for accommodations uh, testing as it is for standard testing? It is for the online test, yes. Are you sure, Tim? Um, I'll, I'm going to take a look at that, Ben. I'll let you know. Uh, I did see there was two listing, listed, but was that just for paper testing, Tim? Uh, I'm looking at the, the document right now myself. It okay. says online administration manual, online testing, standard time, and accommodations. Oh, wonderful. So, Sorry, I misspoke. I oh, think there's oh. a paper accommodations one that might be available as well. Right, right, there is. So it says okay. standard time over multiple days or single session with breaks is needed. So yes, it does list the specific accommodations that you could, you could have. Um, and it has a script. So literally, even though it's, it's a lot of pages, most of this is script. Uh, so students, so staff can mark what it is that they um, uh, need to do. There is something that says all timings begin here. So it's an introduction and you literally just read. It's, it has portions that are in, in a shaded text box. And that is what you uh, read. It says say, and then it has, you are about to take the pre-ACT secure, which is composed, et cetera, et cetera. So it lays out the process and exactly what they're supposed to say. Um, and the idea is that this is not something that you just do a, a freehand riff off of. This is to ensure that all students have the same instructions, that it's a fair test, that you're not taking too much time to tell stories about testing, that you actually go through and they hear what it is that you need to, need to say to them. So that script, is is available and it is in the pre act secure online administration manual we also know that there are opportunities for the test directions to be in spanish so if you need that um, also let us know so if you can email 
myself, uh, Sarah, and Jamie Anderson. Um, let us know what you need. Um, we'll get that out the door and to printing services as soon as possible. What questions do you have about that? We're almost done with this and then we'll go, we'll do a quick dive into the live site, but I do want to get to a couple other pieces as well. So Tim, Tim I do have yeah. a question and you might've already gone over this, but um, I tried going into testadmin.act.org and, you know, trying to look at some of this stuff. It's the same thing that I used for the ACT online. Um, right now, for me only, it is listing pre-ACT spring of 2023 and ACT spring of 2024. So I don't know if that it just hasn't opened or... No. So that's one of the things, that, and thank you for saying that, Jeff, because that's one of the things that I need to go in and actually say, no, Jeff, you should have access to the pre-ACT 2020, uh, 2024. It's, it's a setting on the inside that I have to give you access. So I will do that. And if Thank anybody you. else, yep, if, if anybody else does not have access in Pearson Access Next, um, please let me know. I don't know, Kristen, if you have uh, access to it, let me know if you don't. Okay. Is this is the online document um, on Pearson Access Next, so the success site, or is that on the ACT site? Yeah, <laughs> you know how, how ACT rolls, they, they're going to create as many websites and locations as possible. Um, so we've linked it in the uh, notes, of the agenda for today. Okay. Um, so that's where it is. It's also on, if you go through the DPI, to it'll link you to their, to ACT's um, online resources. Um, and you'll find that it's in the Wisconsin uh, resource site. Um, I think it's step five, potentially. So. Okay. Well, I, my reason for asking is I hate killing trees, and I think you can yep. probably pull one apart and make pages that are relevant to your test room supervisors uh, for their testing room. Um, that'll be a whole lot less pages, and so I don't. I don't think I'll probably be requesting 150 okay. copies from you guys. I'm probably going to make the pages up for myself. Well, yes, I appreciate that greatly because I also agree that, you know, most of the, the folks won't need to have most of those pages. And yes, there's 118 pages. And so you're looking at, you know, 59 uh, pages, pieces of paper for each one. If I'm offering that up, if I'm not going to pull it apart, but if you want to do that, um, I, I appreciate that greatly. Uh, but just let me know if you want the whole thing printed and how many copies you need, because we'll, we can do that. The bulk printing, um, I can't do the school specific printing. So, all right. Just to, again, while staff are on the test site, they will be able to see where students are at. Um, there is a, uh, color coded, um, status bars that will say, you know, this student is exited, this student is ready, this is completed. Um, usually the gray ready is if students are prior to logging in, and then also if a student is absent, it'll just keep it there. Um, make sure that they, the staff members don't hit the complete button. We'll talk about that. I'll send you kind of a how to close out the testing. That is a thing that was really annoying in the past, um, but I think they've worked through this and not and not made it as as uh, complicated as it was once was. You'll notice that the um, each of these status indicators has a drop down arrow. So, for instance, I know that uh, when I was at Shabazz, there was a student who it said that the, the test needed to be resumed. Um, so literally the drop down menu under resume, you click that, there was one choice, I clicked it, um, and then it said, it told me exactly what to do, what the next step was, and the student was able to get right back in to the test. Um, so please keep that in mind that it's, it, um, 
walks you through any kind of changes. All right, Tim, I'm going to, move, yes. Sorry, before we move on to GCYA, um, can I mention one more thing about pre-ACT? Please. Um, I'm sorry if you addressed this. I did receive a phone call at one point during the meeting. So sorry if you already went over this, but testing okay. tickets, have you, did you talk about testing tickets? I just mentioned that they exist. I didn't talk about when or anything like that. So, yes, so like Tim ahead. said, the next step is that you all will set up your preferred testing sessions, get your kids into the groups that you want. Once that is complete, um, uh, some of you that have been around for a while know that when we used to have Aspire, you had to juggle a lot of tickets and we needed to do different colors and all that stuff. But for pre-ACT, there's one ticket only. So it's pretty simple. Um, we would still be happy to print them for you. However, you would need to let us know when the tickets are ready, when you feel like your sessions are ready. If you could send, um, if you could send me an email, you could copy Tim and Jamie if you'd like to. We'll print them for you and send them to you unless you'd like to do it locally. So um, just a, it's not going to be like a specific date. I'm going to print them all. I'd be happy to do that school by school once the school is ready. Just note that um, it might need to be after break. Uh, I won't be in the office until April 1st, but at that point I can print it and use this one takes so much less time than forward. So if you just give me an email that says we're ready, um, we'd be happy to print those locally. They are one per sheet. You don't have to cut anything apart. That's the way we will print them. Um, and if for any reason you would like us not to print them for you, also let me know just because I know sometimes depending on the size of your program. Some people like to uh, print things locally. We can go either way. Just know that the offer is out there. You'll just have to let us know when things are ready. Great, thank you. Yes, there were so many steps that I neglected to include that one, which is also important. So again, the, uh, the students will have to have that the morning of the test. And then the, there is something called a seal code, and that is under the resources in the actual um, session. So uh, I hate to do this, but I'm going to jump and finish up a couple things and then we'll go live to the practice website uh, because I want to make sure that we get this in. I know our time is is running low, um, but I do want to just touch base on a couple things. So uh, just to kind of a follow up, uh, DCYA, thank you. As a district, we hit over 60% completion. I know the, the high schools did an amazing job. I really appreciate that. Our data is going to be coming back in the next month or so. Um, we're working on getting this in a way that might be useful to you, um, but I want you to have the information um, as soon as possible. So I'm working with, with a team of people to actually get that to you. So thank you, it, greatly appreciated. Uh, one of the things that, that we try to think about is how can we improve? I know that we're now focused on the pre-ACT, but if something struck you as being, wow, we really should have done this differently, um, email myself. We can include the group um, or just if you have some suggestions, let us know because we really do want to improve and make it easier for you, which makes it better for students. So. And then finally, uh, keep in mind that Dynamic Learning Maps is open. I think we're all on track for that. Um, and the forward opens up as well, is open. So if there are questions about that, I think the tickets are out. Um, it's just a login again through on the Chromebooks. And so we want to make sure that that's available. Um, again, opt out is the same process. If you have students who actually opt out, um, send an email with the, the version, the, the, a digital copy of what they did or the, forward their email to myself and Jamie Anderson. That would be appreciated. Um, we find that in, in the past, what has happened is that students opt out by not showing up on test day. That would be a non-tested reason and we will have to enter all those uh, between the um, school and our, our team, we will make sure that we get those entered prior to the end of uh, the testing window, April 26th. So given that, 
I'm going to uh, stop sharing and then I'm going to go and set myself up for the training site of the ACT, which is also linked on your, I believe it's linked on the agenda. If not, if it's in the slides. So while I'm, I'm doing this, do you want, if you have any questions, please let me know. So Tim, I got questions, but I think maybe training first. I don't know. Okay. So I'll wait till after. Okay. I also know that uh, uh, you may end up having to go. Um, I appreciate that. And let me know what questions you have. By the way, the training site uses the same login as as your as the active live Pearson Access Next. So uh, again, I'm going to go up to the top. The only option is training 2324. I could do this for any school. I am going to um, use the, our friends at Capital. So then I would go to the setup, just like I have before. And again, you can see what's here um, for testing. Um, so here is where I would go to set up my users. These are all those folks who are already in the system. I'm going to use Chet Bimbenik, who is our tech services director. I'm going to add him as a user. Notice that there's nothing here, even though he's in the system, because I have to go and click on his name. And then it says, oh, he has access to Shabazz. I'm going to change that and have him uh, have access to Capital. Uh, he is a room supervisor. I put in his email address. It will uh, put that in. And then you just put the first and the last name. Notice I did not um, have an active begin or end date. And then save. So that will save. And it tells me that, yes, this, this has been successfully saved. Again, this reacts and acts same, essentially the same as our uh, Pearson Access Next in the blue, the live version. So I'm going to go through that whole process of, of selecting uh, the, uh, the, the staff. You'll notice that um, over here on the left, I can filter. And if you can't find somebody, um, you may want to go over here and filter simply by account status, in which it says deleted or disabled. By doing that disabled, uh, for some reason, some folks get um, their account turned off uh, at some point during the year. And so then they would you'd need to just switch from disabled. Uh, so here's a whole bunch of them. You could just go in and create and edit this. And then it says inactive, uh, disabled. I could just simply by drop down enable that. So um, I'm going to go out of that and go to the testing portion. And I'm going to create sessions. So here is the chance that I can create a session. I'm going to do that using this button. Notice though, that there are also really, there's a really critical piece over here on the left. If I select the down arrow on the task bar, um, you can do all those same things, but then show students in sessions and control sessions. This is a really critical piece. So let's set up a session and put students in here. So I'm gonna create a session. I'm gonna call this Tim's session one. At Capital High, I'm going to assign the test. This happens to be the ACT, but remember that it would be the pre-ACT. We're just going to do this for argument's sake right now. The group type is mock administration. So I'm just practicing and, and setting this up. And within this, notice that start date, I can set this up using a calendar. So I'm going to set it up for the 8th of April. I'm going to set it at the time. I'm going to set it at uh, 7 a.m. that it will start. And then I can start adding students to this list. You'll notice just by clicking, it will always, it'll bring up all the students who are available to me. In the practice test site, it will have 
uh, student names and student IDs. So you would just kind of scroll through and pick your students. And then um, I'm going to create a session. I should have five students in this session. So here is, it goes back to the startup screen so I can go immediately into my next session, or I can look back and see who was listed in my current session so I could add more students if I needed to. All right, so that is saved. Now, you could also, I'm gonna exit out of here. You could also, uh, Go to show students in sessions. And you'll notice over on the left, it has a list of my sessions. If, if you created more, you can simply add a session to this list. If I want to work with this session, I'm going to highlight it. And you'll notice now all the student names have come up and they are in the ready status, although I have not prepared this session. When it's time, I'm going to click on the prepare session. I want to also point out that above this are the resources. Here is the seal codes. So once you set up a session, the seal code is locked in for those sessions for all those tests. If you add students, um, you would need to get a new seal code to include them. This is also if you have a need to print a students. You could print for this session. You could print uh, those students that you select. If you had needed only two tickets, I could go here and print that. This is the portion that we would be doing um, if you so choose to have us do that. We're all, that's what we're offering. So again, in this, again, this is going to be similar to the, exactly the same as the live piece. I'm clicking my session. I am going over to resources and I can print the seal codes. What would that look like? Um, I'm going to share this. It would look like this. It would have the session name, the specific test, the date and the location might be there, but here it's already generated. The session one English is this four digit code. So these would be the seal codes for that session. I'm going to go back and go into this particular tool again. I'm going to prepare the sessions when I'm ready. You'll notice that it is waiting and it continues. So it, this takes a little bit of time. Notice I only put in five students and it's taking this long to prepare the session. So it's going through this process. Once it is ready, I'm hoping it won't take too long. Um, we'll take a look and see what this all looks like. Keep in mind that, it, there we go. Keep in mind that in the practice session, you can certainly go through and take a look at what all these tabs do. You're not gonna hurt anything. All right, morning of the test. I'm going to come in and I'm going to start the session. And once the session started, you'll notice that it changes the display. I have a bar here that is will indicate how many of my students are at which point in the test. And over here on the right, student status key. So all five of my students are in the ready position. It will show different, you know, active if they are testing, it will show that. And here's what I need to do in order to actually get them started. I need to unlock the test. It now allows them to actually move forward and test. Finally, um, if you want to see where the students are, you click on the monitor test and it shows you how much time they, uh, you know, where they are, if they're active, uh, how long they have and the progress. So it literally will say how many questions they've answered, how many are remaining, how many have they not responded to. I'm sorry. Let me share this tab. So this is what this session will look like. Again, my five students on the left, what status they are during testing, it should say active, how much time is left for each student, and then their progress. It will list it out over here. All right, 
I'm going to go back here uh, at the end. You said what did you what did you double click on to get that the bar? Okay, uh, no, right above. Uh, let's see. I don't think I can make this monitor out. test. I I monitor monitor test. Monitor test. Got it. Thank so you. So the proctors can actually go in and monitor what's happening with all their students. Um, if there's a problem, this that page that you're seeing right now is the one to work from because here is where once it's active. It will have a drop down option for for each student to to either resume it or to resume the upload or to do anything else. Um, it will mark things completed once the student has finished. Staff don't have to do that. So again, you can get this information um, by working in this particular site. Uh, so you can actually, once staff have their own account set up, you can send them this with a couple of sessions all set up for them that you can create and they will be able to log in and see how this works for them. So it's not a bad idea to actually to go ahead and do this. This was what the mock administration would be like. You'd be using this particular site. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I appreciate your time. Um, I'll hang out for questions, but I'm going to stop the recording and uh, hope I'll have this recorded and uh, posted shortly.